All right, since my last video talking about the launch of the NVIDIA cards yesterday, I've got some more research on DLSS 3 and the performance, what are the actual performance gains we're getting from these current cards? Why is DLSS 3 only on the 4000 series? Could it ever come to the 3000 series? There's been an NVIDIA engineer uh, talking a lot about DLSS 3. So we're gonna talk about that. But first, let's jump into this performance graph. Following up on my misleading video, not that my video was misleading, I was trying to unmislead. <laughs> That's not a word, I don't think. Um, from NVIDIA's charts they're giving here. So they do have one that's showing today's games rather than the, you know, uh, next generation games. So we can see what sorts of performance to expect. Because again, NVIDIA is claiming the two to four times performance increase as the big marketing slide in their actual presentation. But ah, after the presentation, they did reveal some more slides like this. And the key detail is whether DLSS 3 is being used. Now, once again, this is really difficult uh, to, to parse out what's going on. I think I need to uh, get out of the way here for a second. So once again, like the slides I was looking at yesterday, this says it's 4K resolution, highest game settings, DLSS super resolution performance mode when applicable, and DLSS frame generation on RTX 40 series when applicable. And Basically, once again, the issue here is when we're comparing to the previous generation, we're seeing the RTX 3090 Ti as our baseline one times performance measurement here. And then we're seeing the 4080 12 gigabyte, the 4080 16 gigabyte, which again, a lot big of a, a bigger difference there than just that VRAM capacity. And then the RTX 4090 um, a, a, on these uh, you know relative performance charts here. The key detail here is look how wildly uh, the performance can swing. We've got, it's really depending a lot on whether the game features DLSS. Because notice they said that they're using DLSS performance mode when applicable. Well, Resident Evil Village does not have DLSS. So in this game, notice we're seeing the RTX 4080 12 gigabyte, which is our new $900 graphics card, actually slower than the RTX 3090 Ti. Now it doesn't show us performance comparison with the 3090 non-Ti, but that th I would imagine that it's fairly uh, fairly close. So I think the 4080 12 gigabyte um, in a fair apples to apples type comparison like this, where we're just playing the game, um, you know, I, I think it is looking uh, more like it's a 3090 competitor although this does say the highest possible game settings and Resident Evil Village does feature ray tracing. So this is still probably a ray tracing to ray tracing benchmark, um, which again, isn't just showing us the rasterized performance difference between the cards. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, we're also seeing Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which again, I don't think actually features DLSS. And in this case, we're seeing the RTX 4080 about the same, but again, a little bit slower than the R than the RTX 3090 Ti. And then um, in games that do feature DLSS, uh, like uh, Warhammer 40,000 Darktide, we are seeing um, a, a much bigger performance gain, right? Not quite a 50% jump, but maybe 45, you know, whatever it is, a percent performance jump. Uh, from the 4080 12 gigabyte versus that 3090 Ti. And again, we I would assume that DLSS is enabled here because it says enabled when applicable. And I, I did check, I pulled up a list of all the DLSS games and I'm trying to compare against that, okay? So if we look at DLSS enabled games, we see Microsoft uh, Flight Sim, we see uh, Warhammer 40K Dark Tide, I, I believe on here. The, the point is, um, that in the three games that don't feature DLSS, the 4080 12 gigabyte is a rough competitor to a 3090 or 3090 Ti, whereas when DLSS is enabled, so I would assume they're probably able to use the DLSS uh, 3 frame generation, which once again, though, it's it's I the footnote isn't making that entirely clear, but I think that would explain this difference here. 
it looks like that's where we're seeing the, that much bigger performance gain. And again, with Microsoft Flight Simulator, we're seeing an almost 2x performance gain. But then all three of these cards, the 4080 12GB, 4080 and the 4090, are all topping out at a very similar performance number, which tells me that this could be that weird thing I was mentioning in the last video, where the way DLSS 3 works, um, it can actually relieve a CPU bottleneck because it's inserting extra frames that aren't actually rendered by the game engine, so the CPU doesn't need to keep up. And so I think these might have all, you know, boosted performance with, you know, DLSS's normal work relieving the GPU, hit a CPU limit, and then maybe pushed past that, um, you know, with those extra inserted frames, and more on that in a second. So. I think if we want to look at an apples to apples comparison, this is more like what we're seeing here, where we're seeing the 4080 as sometimes uh, uh, keeping up with the 3090 Ti, sometimes not. Um, the 4080 16 gigabyte looking like it's, oh, what is that? Maybe a 20% faster than a 3090 Ti. And again, you there's been 3090 Ti's available for $1,000 right now. And this is a $1,600 graphics card. So I'm just gonna, uh, sorry, not 1,600, $1,200 graphics card. So we are seeing a uh, kind of even performance scaling if it is about 20% faster for about 20% more money, but then it does have the newer features. So that's interesting. Sorry, and then the 4090, which is our you know $1,600 graphics card. Well, I mean, is that about 1.6, <laughs> you know, 1.5, 1.7, 1.6 maybe? Um, so again, it's looking like this is maybe more in the 50 to 70, maybe we'll call it 60% range off of the data that we have available of how much faster the 4090 actually is in an apples to apples comparison against the 3090 Ti. But again, we really need some independent testing here to verify all of this. Now. Why do I think it's maybe not fair to talk about the DLSS 3? Not only just because it's not an apples to apples comparison, but let's think about what it does because the, the elephant in the room here is the latency, okay? Latency issues. Because when I was looking at the initial announcement, it seemed like there's two possible ways that this could work. Um, how do you insert additional frames? Well, one way that this type of thing could try to be accomplished would be to predict what the next frame will look like before the next frame has been rendered. So you actually get an additional next frame. Now that would have huge issues because it could probably be wrong and I don't think that would work very well. So that's not what it seems like they're doing. What it seems like they're doing is you do generate two frames and insert a frame uh, that, that's your extra frame in between. Now this increases the total number of frames showing up on your frame per, per se, screen per second, and this should make the game look smoother, much like TVs with their you know uh, smooth motion or motion flow or those those types of things, where it kind of it's the soap opera effect thing, right? Where it, it kind of uh, you know makes things look smoother in motion. But the thing is, when you're playing a, a movie or a TV show, latency is irrelevant. It can look at a frame, look at the next frame, kind of average those out, insert the additional frame, and then that's fine because it can just delay showing all of that uh, for all that processing to take place. The problem here is if you wait to generate both frames to then insert an additional frame off of that data, then you just delayed showing the newer frame that you already had, okay? And that's what it looks like this is actually doing, which brings up latency issues. Also, there's the question of, could this run on, uh, on older hardware? So uh, this WCCF Tech article is um, quoting Brian uh, Catanzaro, who is the vice pre NVIDIA Vice President of Applied Deep Learning Research. Okay, so he's, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> and is talking about it here. So what does he have to say? He says, DLSS 3 has been a labor of love and applied deep learning research since the group was founded. I can't wait for people to play it. Now in the same uh, Twitter thread, he uh, responds and says, DLSS 3 relies on the optical flow accelerator, which does exist in older um, RTX 2000 and 3000 GPUs. 
okay? But he says it has been significantly improved in Ada over Ampere. It's both faster and higher quality. He says the OFA has existed in GPUs since Turing, right? So back to the 2000 series. However, it's significantly faster and higher quality in ADA, and we rely on it for DLSS 3. And he's saying that the you know older GPU customers would feel that DLSS 3 is laggy, has bad image quality, and doesn't boost FPS. So he's at least claiming um, that it really just wouldn't work well in its current state on the older versions of OFA that are present in those older GPUs. Now, he does say it's theoretically possible that with additional research and engineering that we could get this technology working on other cards, although it wouldn't provide as much benefit. And he's saying the current version only works on 4000 series. So taking him at his word, which I guess we could, but keep in mind, you know, could, could just because he knows what he's talking about doesn't mean he is telling the truth. But it sounds to me like he probably is, and they just focused on developing this for the uh, 4000 series GPUs. There probably wasn't a lot of motivation to try to get a version working on the older cards because they want to use this as a selling point to, well, I mean, give us graphs that look like um, you, you know, look like these ones, okay, <laughs> when you're comparing to the older generation. So there's incentive to not get it up and running on older GPUs too soon, if ever, because you want to sell the newer ones. Um, and it will justify their inflated prices, at least. <laughs> anyway, now, latency is a big deal. So this is interesting. He says, NVIDIA Reflex removes significant latency from the game rendering pipeline by removing the render queue and more tightly synchronizing the CPU and GPU. Yes, we've had NVIDIA Reflex for a long time. It's cool, it's good, but it's not a DLSS 3 exclusive. So listen, the combination of NVIDIA Reflex and DLSS 3 provides much faster FPS at about the same system latency. Okay, so what is he saying here? He's saying that DLSS 3 absolutely does increase latency. Doing DLSS 3, because they're taking your frame, your next frame, and then inserting one in between, you had to delay showing us the new frame. So that increases latency. Absolutely does. They're saying that NVIDIA Reflex is able to gain you back about the same amount of latency that DLSS 3 loses, right? Or sorry, in other words, DLSS 3 gains latency, Reflex subtracts about the same amount of latency, but here's the elephant in the room. If you looked at these graphs, but if this was about latency, so usually in the past, frame rate, one of the big reasons why frame rate has been important to gamers is that your game feels more responsive. Okay, that's one of the big deals. It feels more responsive. But if we looked at a, a graph of the latency, it would not be this stark of an improvement um, for this new generation when using DLSS 3. The motion on the screen will look smoother. But what, there, what I'd like to see the comparison of is NVIDIA Reflex using DLSS 2.0 on like an RTX 3090 Ti versus DLSS 3 with NVIDIA Reflex on our newer generation. Because if they, uh, beca because that, that, that's the thing. Um, sure, we could claim NVIDIA Reflex benefits if we're comparing to AMD, but if we're comparing to the older generation of, of NVIDIA GPUs, they have NVIDIA Reflex support already. So DLSS 3 is doing a weird thing where we're going to see frame rates improve, but the latency not improve. So you'll see smoother motion on your screen, um, but not feel the improvement. And so this will be much less useful for certain types of games, especially like competitive shooters and things like that, where you'd be better off using DLSS 2 with Reflex because you'll get the, the, in, the latency subtraction from Reflex and DLSS 2 isn't delaying your frame to insert the in-between one to make it look smoother. Now, I think there are certain game types where 
the the latency is going to be fine. It's not an issue, and getting the smoother motion on the screen will be good. But the point is, these frames are not all created equal in terms of the responsiveness to how they feel. How they look and how they feel are not the same thing, and I think that's a big deal. Anyway, the last qu uh, um, uh, quote we have um, here that is pretty interesting is also uh, uh, regarding the remix, which I haven't talked much about in this uh, video, but they did show off a really cool thing, which is the um, like modding tools for old games to be able to do things like insert more of a ray traced renderer or use AI tools to upscale old materials and textures and things like that. Um, and that looks really cool, and he has a comment on that as well. The Remix runtime is a pretty complicated reverse game engine uh, that finds objects in draw calls, which allows us to derive motion vectors from that, which is interesting. The runtime doesn't make any artistic decisions. It works with the original and replacement assets that it's given. Modders can choose to use AI tools for like material upscaling or do everything by hand. And he says, particles and decals just work. Some DX hacks need special processing or should be disabled. Anyway, so overall, in summary, <laughs> what are we expecting? Well, in actual apples to apples performance gains, it looks like the 4080-12 gigabyte is a 3090 Ti and 3090 competitor. Looks like it's not always faster than the 3090 Ti, the 4080. Uh, 16 gigabyte, the real 4080 is looking like maybe a 20% uh, uplift over the 3090 Ti for about 20% more price based on current pricing. And then we're seeing the uh, 4090 at you know 50 to 70% faster again, apples to apples. DLSS 3 is a real thing that is an exclusive advantage and will pr pr provide large frame rate boosts and it will have faster ray tracing cores and all of that. But those frames when relying on DLSS 3 probably won't feel as fast as a normal frame does. <laughs> but there's so much testing needed on all this, I'm still really excited, despite the pricing and potential misleading issues. What do you guys think? Um, th there's some good stuff here. It's really interesting, <laughs> but it's also a little misleading, and I think it's gonna make um, frame rate graph, I don't know, are we gonna need like latency graphs in our reviews now? I don't know. I hope all of you have an excellent day.